Thought animals worked for free in Hollywood? Think again. You've got to pay all your actors, even the ones who can't qualify for a credit card. In fact, these furry friends earned more than human beings working on the same projects. Rin Tin Tin has to be one of the most legendary actors in Hollywood history. After all, how many other animals could open a film on name recognition alone? How many others got paid on their own salary in addition to what their handler was paid? How many can claim that they took home a bigger paycheck than actual movie stars? Journalist Susan Orlean has done more research on Rin Tin Tin than almost anyone, writing the dog's biography, Rin Tin Tin, The Life and the Legend. She also wrote an article about Rin Tin for The New Yorker where she stated that Warner Brothers paid Rinty, known as the mortgage lifter, for his ability to make any movie he was in bankable, $2,000 per week. She told the New York Post that the studio paid the dog eight times as much as they paid human actors. The biography confirms at least one instance in which Rinty was paid more than his co-star. Rinty starred alongside William Collier Jr. in the 1924 Warner Brothers flick The Lighthouse by the Sea. Rinty Tim was paid $1,000 a week for the role while Collier only got $150 per week. Collier was an important enough actor to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and he still pulled in less of a paycheck than a dog. Though it's near impossible to locate contract information for most of Rin Tin Tin's movies, all of this info implies that Rin Tee getting a bigger paycheck than his co-stars was a frequent occurrence. Toto? I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. One of the longest persisting rumors about The Wizard of Oz surrounds Toto, specifically that the dog got paid more than Judy Garland. This rumor is false. Most sources indicate that Terry, the dog who played Toto, was paid $125 a week. Garland's salary is often listed as $500 per week, certainly more than Terry, but poultry when compared to the $3,000 Jack Haley, the Tin Man, and Ray Bolger, the Scarecrow, received each week. Terry, however, was paid more per week than at least 124 actors in the movie. More specifically, the dog was paid more than the Munchkins. The Munchkins of Oz, a 1996 book by Oz historian Stephen Cox, claims that the Munchkin actors each made $50 per week. Obituaries for Munchkin actors Carl Slover and Jerry Merrin both repeat that $50 claim. That said, there's reason to believe the number was technically higher, if not by the time it reached their bank accounts. Several sources, including a 1997 Los Angeles Times interview with Marin, indicate the Munchkins were paid $100 a week, but their manager, Leo Singer, pocketed half of it. But whether you want to count that as $50 or $100, a dog still pulled a bigger paycheck than 124 human beings. Crystal the Monkey is one of the most prominent animal actors in modern Hollywood. The Capuchin's filmography is enough to make many human actor ask if she'd share the contact information for her agent. Crystal got her start in 1997, playing, what else, a baby monkey in George of the Jungle. She has since gone on to have many prominent recognizable roles, the drunk monkey in Dog the Doolittle 2, the drug dealing monkey in The Hangover Part 2, Dexter in the Night of the Museum series, and a recurring role as Annie's boobs on Community. Isn't that right, Annie's boobs? Please rename that thing, and this time not with a contest on Twitter. Being such a prominent actor commands a big salary, even for an animal. On at least one occasion, Crystal got paid more than her human co-stars. In 2012, Crystal co-starred in the short-lived NBC sitcom Animal Practice. Crystal was a big part of the show's marketing and ad push, far from just some no-name animal. Just before the show debuted, TV Guide released their annual list of the highest-paid TV stars. The fifth highest-paid actor for a comedy series was Crystal, pulling in $12,000 per episode. Long story short, Crystal's veteran co-stars like Justin Kirk, Bobby Lee, and Joanna Garcia Swisher were paid less than a Capuchin monkey. In 2014, The Hollywood Reporter said that Crystal got $108,000 for her nine episodes of Animal Practice, more than double the $52,000 sag cites as the industry average a human would receive. As such, there's a decent chance that Crystal has gotten paid more than at least a few co-stars on several occasions. 1943's Lassie Come Home was the first movie in the legendary Lassie series which kicked off a long-running franchise about the lovable Collie. Lassie was portrayed by a male canine actor named Pal in Lassie Come Home, and Pal would go on to play Lassie for years to come. Since Pal was a star of the movie, he was, despite being a dog, financially compensated for his time. While it's hard to find reliable sources on how much he got paid, it is known that he was paid more than at least one actor. One had go on to become kind of a big deal. This is my little granddaughter, Priscilla. How do you do, how do, you do child? 
Multiple sources, including CBS News and the American Kennel Club, claim that Powell got paid more than a little girl by the name of Elizabeth Taylor. Yes, that Elizabeth Taylor. CBS News in particular claims that Powell's salary was twice that of Taylor. Granted, this was very early in Taylor's career. It was one of her first ever movies, and it wasn't exactly a meaty role. But it's still shocking that a canine actor would get paid more than a human actor, much less one who'd become one of the biggest movie stars of all time. For many, 1966's Manos, The Hands of Fate is the stock answer for worst movie ever made. The backstory is more compelling than the movie itself. El Paso fertilizer salesman Harold P. Warren wrote, produced, directed, and acted in Manos after betting that anyone could make a film. He assembled a cast, shot the movie in eight days, and the end result was disastrous enough that the movie fell into obscurity. It wasn't until Mystery Science Theater 3000 stumbled upon a copy decades later that the rest of the world learned the true horrors of Manos wasn't creepy cults, but bad editing. The movie was made on a reported $19,000 budget, and as such, almost no one was compensated. Almost. Jackie Naaman Jones, who played Debbie, revealed to Cracked in 2016 that she and her dog, a Doberman who played the master's familiar, were the only two actors compensated. She explained, My dog got a 50-pound bag of food, and I got a red bike with training wheels and plastic streamers. Everyone else was promised a cut of the film's profits, which ended up being a whopping zero dollars. Manos fell into the public domain sometime between its premiere and its discovery by MST3K, so that number will remain at zero. But hey, at least the dog was fed. I am Michael. Bye, Bye Mike. Mike. I take care of the place while the master is away. Oh, it's over. <sighs>